Hey guys, it's Moon Moth Goddess. Welcome back to the channel. If you're returning, welcome. If you're new, please consider subscribing for those of you that have not done so already. And if this pick a card reading does resonate for you, please feel free to check out the pick a card playlist that I do have created for you guys. For those of you that are wanting to book a private reading, my email is down below in the description box where you can send me an email and I will provide you on more information on booking readings with me. So before we get started, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have some really bad allergies um, right now, so I apologize if I sound a little off, um, as well as my nose kind of um, bothering me, so it's kind of making me feel like I'm mouth breathing, <laughs> um, so just to kind of get that out of the way. But today's pick a card reading, we are looking into asking spirit, what is the key to your success? Um, so success is going to be something that is different, interpreted different for every single one of you that is watching. So we're going to kind of leave uh, the reading open to those of you that are looking, you know, maybe for success in love, success on your spiritual path. Uh, success with your finances or even your career or even with your family, your friends, um, anything really um, in your approach to life. So we're just kind of leaving it open for spirit to kind of bring through any messages um, that you need to hear about what is your key to success. Now before you, you do see three um, crystals and I'm just going to go over them really quickly for those of you that feel drawn to a specific crystal. I am going to be pulling our tarot cards on camera but if you don't want to wait for that and you already kind of feel really connected to one of these crystals the timestamps will be down below but for those of you that want to kind of stick around and um, watch as I kind of put the piles together um, you're more than welcome to do that so what is your key to success pile number one is going to be this smoky quartz um, point here pile number two is going to be this um, it's kind of like a creamy beige little heart for pile number two. And then pile number three is going to be this petrified wood, which is cream um, and black, kind of like a super dark brown um, and cream. So if you're already resonating with one of the crystals, um, you can find the timestamp down below. What is your key to success? Um, and I will see you at your reading. But for the rest of you that want to watch as I kind of put these little piles together um, for you guys um, with the crystal on top of it, um, you're more than welcome to kind of watch this process. Now, normally I do all of my um, shuffling on camera. So we're going to do is we're going to choose our tarot cards and then uh, put our piles together with the crystals on top of it so you can choose that way um, and then once we are finished with that we will go into your reading and which we will review the tarot cards and then we will add on some additional oracle messages for your pile so pile number one with the smoky quartz what is the key to your success for pile number one what is the key to their success okay so we already have two cards popping out for pile one so pile number two what is the key to pile number two's success and that's perfect because I wanted to pull two from this deck here pile number two what is the key to your success so there's one, pile number two, what is the key? Okay, so we have this one popping out. Pile number three, with the petrified wood, what is the key to your success? Okay, <clears throat> so there is that one. So now we're gonna add on this deck here, pile number one. What is the key to pile number one's success? What is the key to pile number one's success? Okay, 
What is the key to pile number one success? So we've got, what is that, four? Four cards for that one. Pile number two with the little heart crystal. What is your key to success? What is pile number two's key to success? What is pile number two's key to success? Okay, so pile number three. What is pile number three's key to success? There's one, two. What is the key to pile number three's success? And then one more from this deck. What is the key to pile number three's success? And then we're going into one more deck. I will have all of the decks listed down below for you guys. I think we have four, six. So we'll pull four from this. Pile number one. What is your key to success? Pile number one's key to success. Pile number two. What is pile number two's key to success? What is that? Three. One more. What is pile number two's key? So last pile, pile three. What is your key to success? Let's do two more for pile number three. What is their key to success? Okay, so now we all are all set with our tarot. I'm actually going to put these in the back. So now we have pile number one. I'm actually going to put it that way. And then pile number two. And pile number three. So I'm gonna give you guys a moment just to kind of see if there's anyone now looking at them, if you feel drawn to them. Um, like I said, we are gonna be pulling our Oracle cards in addition to once we get into your specific pile. So pile one with the smoky quartz, pile number two with this cream little heart, and then pile number three with the petrified wood. Pause the video if you need more time and I will see you at your pile. Hi, pile one. So for those of you that resonated with the smoky quartz little point, this is going to be a reading. So if you missed it in the intro, we did pull our tarot cards um, for the crystal. So if you want to go back and watch how I did that, um, you can go back to the beginning. There will be a timestamp there for that. So let's take a look um, at your tarot. What is the key to your success? Pile number one. We are, wow, we're starting off with the hermit Virgo energy here. And then we also have the Magician. We have the Hierophant, Taurus, Aries, Emperor energy here. And we have to move this. We also have the World. We have the Nine of Wands. We have the Page of Swords. We have the Six of Swords, the Seven of Swords, and then we also have, wow, the Ace of Swords. Okay, so let me just take a look at what we've got here. We've also got Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy here. 
Okay, so the first thing that is sticking out to me for the key to your success, pile number one, um, is the Hermit. Okay, our first card out um, that we had here. And the Hermit energy is a lot of personal reflection. Okay, so whatever your dreams, desires, things that you are really wanting to manifest um, as a part of your success, no matter if that is love, career, finances, part of your spiritual path or journey, no matter what that is, a huge part of your success is you to really focus and reflect within the self. Um, because within the self is where you truly find, you know, what your deepest desires may be for your life. The things that are going to bring you the most joy and happiness. And really those things are found within the self, you know. Sometimes we we move through life really quickly. We make fast or quick decisions. We don't really think things through at times. Um and we may, you know, decide to get ourselves involved in a situation with a person or even at a specific career. And we feel sometimes like we have it all figured out. This is it. <laughs> and we invest, you know, our time, our money or our love into something. And then later on down the road, we find out that it wasn't the right fit. It wasn't quite what we had anticipated or expected. Um, as an outcome of what we've experienced. So the hermit energy is important for you to reflect often and for you to really reflect within the self to really, I feel like, sort through your feelings, your emotions, um, any type of belief systems um, that you may have because I'm also seeing the hierophant here with these two little keys, okay? So I love that there is those keys there um, as well. So the Hierophant energy is also about our belief system, our values, our morals. Um, for some of you, the Hierophant can represent wisdom, knowledge, education, learning, taking all of this information in. I'm also seeing the Page of Swords energy here. So the Page of Swords is really about us learning lessons and for us to never stop learning, never stop asking questions, never, you know, be afraid to be too curious and to really question things within your life, um, questioning your own decisions, your actions, and really take some time to truly think about what it is that you truly want. Um, the hermit energy is the energy where we, we truly find our soul's calling where we really find out who we are, we find out what our identity is um, without all of the um, self-limiting beliefs. So the hermit or the hierophant energy can sometimes be when we are at that point in our life where we have so many different belief systems about our life and what we should do or what we think we should do. And sometimes those belief systems can be limiting in that they may have been things that we've gone through, say, as a child, during early relationships, during early formative years in our life that can really create blockages for us along our path, no matter if that is a relationship, our career, our money mindset, or even on our spiritual path. So the Hierophant really asks you to take time in your life to really think about how your belief system is serving you. Do you have self-limiting beliefs that are blocking you from truly connecting from with someone in terms of love, relationships? If we go through really painful things from our past with our friendships, family members, um, relationships, or even something that we've experienced as a child with mom and dad, sometimes those can be things that create those self-limiting beliefs for us and we start to believe certain things of our, about ourselves, or even in the way that we view other people that may not necessarily be true or they may be things that are holding us back. So reflection is something that is very important for you to really take a pause, take a break along your path or along even in the middle of a relationship with your friendship and really reflect inwards and say to yourself, does this relationship does this friendship does this career does this way of thinking about money or whatever that may be 
Does it serve my highest good? Okay, learning lessons is a huge thing with the Hierophant. So learning many lessons during life. I am feeling that um, educating yourself, um, even if it's not in the traditional way, some of you may feel, you know, I want to go off to college. I want to get a degree. I want to, you know, do something very specific, say for a career. And some of you may find that a strict way of doing things with the Hierophant energy, because the Hierophant can be sometimes very rigid, have a very rigid way of thinking, um, or even acting, doing things, making decisions. So this is really a time for you to truly ask yourself, are those um, beliefs, are my values, are my morals something that is holding me back? Are they limiting me? Um, and also constant learning, you know, taking in knowledge, never feeling like you're too old to learn something, to learn something new, to try a new skill. So the Page of Swords to me is this energy of a student. It's very curious, asking questions, taking in a lot and absorbing a lot of knowledge. So being that this Hierophant has two keys there, I feel like a lot of this is centered around um, your beliefs, okay, and how you carry those through your uh, relationships. Now, I'm also seeing that we do have the world energy here as well. And with the world energy, I feel like this is really not being afraid to close out cycles, especially if it's one that has kept you in a cycle that has been feeling like it no longer serves a purpose. Meaning that if you are, say, in a relationship and you kind of look at the relationship and say, you know, it does this relationship make me feel happy. That is where that reflection comes in. Does this career make me feel happy? Does my relationship with money, is there something that I'm doing on my spiritual path that makes me feel like I am feeling fulfilled at this time? Do I feel successful on my path? So the world energy is about you not being afraid to close out or end certain cycles that you are aware of that you may, that your own belief system may be keeping you kind of stuck in. The world brings about endings, closing cycles in our life to allow for new beginnings for us. Okay. The other thing that I'm noticing is that we do have the nine of wands energy and the nine of wands may be that there are many challenges and obstacles that you may meet along your path in your life. And the nine of wands is about resilience. It is about not giving up on anything, regardless of what your past experiences have been with whatever it is, money, career, finances, love, um, spiritual path. The Nine of Wands is showing how strong you are as a person, how much you've gone through, and to really be very proud of yourself, okay? The Nine of Wands is about you taking time, again, reflection, like I said, a huge part of your path, a huge part of your journey to success is for you to reflect on those wounds, for you to reflect on the challenges, the struggles, how far you've come, you know, what you've learned from the experience with the Hierophant and the Page of Swords. And for you to really not give up on your dreams, your goals. Some of you, if you've gone through some particularly challenging friendships, family situations, relationships, of course, you have to really reflect within the self to say, does this relationship still serve? You know, is this relationship, has, has this relationship already taught me all of the lessons that I need to know? Do I need to hold on to this connection, hold on to this relationship, hold on to this career, no matter what it is? <clears throat> Sorry, guys. <clears throat> the nine of wands is letting you know that sometimes the journey gets tough. Sometimes there are difficult choices to make kind of along the path. Um, so this energy of not giving up, you know, so... What that what I want this to mean for you is that, of course, you will all have your decisions and choices about, say, relationships that you're in or a job that you're in. And even if it's a, a relationship or a job that you feel is no longer a fit and you're wanting to kind of close out that cycle in your life, the nine of wands is telling you don't give up on that in the future. So some of you may be in a position where you've had painful relationships that have come to an end that have been kind of removed from your life or the things that you've walked away from. But that does not mean that you should give up on love, that you should give up on your dreams, on your goals, on your desires um, within your life. 
Okay. So that's what I mean by, by not giving up. If you are in a situation where you are, I would say that you feel like a connection, a relationship, a friendship, a, a job is limiting you. Okay. Is limiting you. And this may be where you're needing to cut ties and not being afraid of walking away and letting go of things that do not serve. We also have the emperor energy here as well. And the emperor is all about big picture perspective, about taking action, about keeping yourself disciplined along your path and not being afraid of making those decisions. Okay. So the emperor is for you to really create a strong, stable environment for yourself in which you can feel free to make the decisions that you feel are best for you. We have the six of swords energy here. And I love that because the six of swords is really about moving away from anything in your life that is creating conflict. Um, that can even be the way that you think. Okay, because the six of swords is moving away from the five of swords into the six. And I'm also seeing the seven of swords here as well. So there is the kind of like the succession of um, these numbers here for you. So the six of swords is about letting go of those things, moving and removing yourself away from situations that do not serve. If that is a specific way of thinking from self-limiting beliefs, then this is you being able to kind of transition away from those things in your life or along your path, leaving behind a certain way of thinking, leaving behind a connection, leaving behind a job that does not serve, or even a relationship that you might have with money that you are aware is not getting you to where you feel success, to where you feel abundant in any area of your life. Now, we also have the Seven of Swords energy here as well. And sometimes that Seven of Swords can be uh, around fears. It can be around the need to hurry and rush and make decisions at times. So I feel like this is really to bring yourself back to uh, reviewing your thoughts Um the things that you're truly wanting to manifest in your life. I'm seeing the Ace of Swords energy here as well, which is all about clarity and being able to uh, receive downloads of information from spirit to be able to uh, understand things clearly. Okay. And the only way that you do that is in that hermit energy um, or even in the Hierophant energy, the emperor looking at the bigger picture of things. Okay, so the Ace of Swords really brings in a clear mindset in which we can look back, reflect on what we've gone through and where we want to be, envision ourselves as being successful. The Magician energy also very powerful. The Magician energy, um, which actually came up in a reading that I did uh, yesterday for the channel, um, but the Magician energy is as above so below, meaning that your thoughts um, create and manifest the reality that you are experiencing. The magician energy is really spirit saying you are in control of your success. You are your key to success. Okay. The magician is all about you having thoughts that you, that you have about what you envision for yourself, what you plan for yourself. So the magician energy is all about you taking those ideas, the inspiration, the things that you learn from your past, the cycles that you've closed out, the things that you've moved away from, the things that are no longer serving, and for you to really kind of take those ideas and realize that you have all the tools within you in this very moment for you to be able to manifest the ideas and the success that you have in mind for yourself, whether that is love career, finances, or a longer spiritual path to really manifest, even for those of you that are wanting to kind of move into alignment with your life mission, your soul's purpose, the whole reason that you have incarnated here on earth at this time. The magician energy is letting you know that you have all of the tools within you to create success within your life. But it does require that you take time to really check to see how am I feeling? Am I feeling my best? Do I 
feel like the relationships and connections that, I'm, that I have in my life foster my growth, my development, that they are leading me to a place where I can truly understand who I am as a person. And they are really ones that are helping to build me up. Okay. The, the views, the values, the morals, are they ones that are really serving your highest good? So the magician energy with the pentacle, okay, the cup, the sword, um, and the wand in his little feet here, okay? These are all of our tools that we use. The wand's energy being all of that firepower energy, our creativity, all of that energy that we have from spirit with our ideas, the things that we feel passionate about, the things that we feel truly within our soul that light us up. We have the cups energy here, which is all about our in, using our intuition, about our emotions and our feelings that are surrounding the success that we want to bring into our life. We have the pentacles energy, which is actually manifesting those things into the 3D world, the 4D world, for us to be able to um, see something that is tangible for us to work towards our certain goals that are going to lead to that success. And then we also have the swords energy here, which is all of our thoughts on our actions and the way that we communicate our desires out into the universe, out to spirit, out to God, and really voice all of these things to ourself. Okay. So beautiful energy, like I said, the most, I, to me, the most important thing for you, pile number one, your key to success is for you to make sure that you are taking time to look within, to reflect within the self. Those answers are found within yourself, okay? And these could be things that are hidden talents of yours, skills that you might have, things that you used to do as a child, dreams that you had for yourself as a child that may have along the way because of certain belief systems or values may have been stripped away. They may be hidden by illusion. They may be hidden by self-sabotaging thoughts, behavior. They may be, you know, uh, different things that you may have learned from your past experiences. Okay, so never stop learning. Never stop asking questions. Never stop I feel like elevating yourself and feeling if this no if this situation no longer feels good, if it's a situation that is creating more heartache, more confusion, more imbalance in my life, is it time to let it go? Is it time to move into something that is going to um, bring me to the place that I'm looking for. The emperor is a very powerful energy of our and representative of our masculine energy. And that emperor energy is about us taking control, us uh, being the leader in our life by us taking action, making decisions, keeping ourselves grounded, keeping that passion and that fire, that zest that we have for life and never stop growing, never stop evolving. Okay, so now let's go into your oracle messages for pile number one. What is your key to success? What is pile number one's key to success? We have spirit has a plan with koala spirit. Okay, so to me, this is really saying a lot about trust and about you trusting what it is that you feel. Look at that. The stag spirit with take the lead. And we also have truth transcends illusion. Okay, so this is really talking about your truth. Okay, not someone's ideals for you. Like I said, sometimes that hierophant can be a very rigid way of thinking because of our past belief system or current belief system. So the truth of who you are and who you envision yourself to be can sometimes be hidden by illusion, either from something that we've learned or um, something that we have gone through. Okay, so you taking the lead here and stepping up with that emperor energy to take control, okay? Realizing that you have the power within yourself to 
bring success into your life, to manifest. The magician is a very powerful energy of bringing those ideas, that inspiration um, into the 3D world, okay? Once we recognize and realize that we have this power within ourselves to manifest and create, our reality is, is an expression of where our thoughts are at. In the experiences that we have, the connections that we have, it's very reflective of our own vibration, our own energy. So when we choose to see ourselves as successful, as powerful, as leaders of our own life, we are in control of what we experience based off of our decisions, our ideas, our thoughts, our actions, our words, and the way that we show up for ourselves. So let's get one more. Pile number one. What is your key to success? We also have butterfly spirit with transformation is beautiful. Okay. And transformation really takes place when we are able to look back at our life reflecting within the self again with that hermit energy. Um, sometimes that hermit energy can feel like a dark night of the soul. It can feel like we feel lost. We feel sad. We feel depressed. We feel like we have no direction. And really, we're needing to look within versus outside of the self, okay? All of our journeys are different. All of our experiences are different. You are unique, okay? So this transformation is something that takes place by us really looking at what lessons we've learned and understanding what choices we've made in the past and how they have served us, where we are at at this point in our life. And if they are something that we are not really liking, this is where we really evolve and grow and change with that higher fun energy by asking the questions by you know being inquisitive by being curious and not being afraid of learning and taking in new information we're, we're able to change we're able to evolve into the beautiful human being that we are truly meant to okay that is your key i love this so let's get a little bit more. Pile number one. What is your key to success? What is pile number one's key to success? And it was actually, you guys, to share a channel with you, Mystic Star Magic. Um, I actually watched one of her little uh, videos this morning before I did this pick a card really early this morning. And she mixed two of these decks that I will have listed down below for you guys, Angels and Ancestors, and I think this one is Wisdom of Avalon, um, and I got inspired by her mixing her two decks um, to use, actually, for this reading today. That little video that I watched of hers inspired me to do this reading, so you guys need to check out her channel, Mystic Star Magic. I actually have her decks... Some of her decks, too, that I use for our love readings for the channel. So, wow. We have wealth energy here. I love it. Okay. So, to me, asking spirit, what is your key to success, is the mindset. Okay. Now, this wealth, like I said, it's going to be different for each of you. For some of you, feeling abundant could be abundant in love, abundant with family, abundant with friends, abundant with... Um, actual finances money in the bank or feeling that the relationships that you foster in your life truly feed your soul they make your soul happy okay so wealth is a mindset okay feeling wealthy feeling abundant so for some of you this could be a shift in perception okay a shift in perception with feeling I am wealthy, you know, the affirmations that you, you know, like the wealth has already happened. I am already wealthy. Okay. So the mindset I feel like here with that energy of wealth is already feeling in that energy right now, you know, not really saying to yourself, I'll be happy when I'm when I have this, when I have that, putting your happiness on hold, not feeling successful because you don't have X amount of dollars in your bank account, not feeling wealthy because you don't have the relationship quite yet or the friendship quite yet. 
This is you feeling wealthy in this moment right now and manifesting that wealth energy into the physical. So pile number one, what is your key to success? We have the dog here. We have loyalty, sincerity, and unconditional love. Okay? So to me, these are all very, very beautiful energies to be in. Okay? When we can be loyal to ourself, to our ideas, to our plans, and we can resonate in that energy of unconditional love, which is a higher vibrational energy. Okay? And we also have forgiveness. Okay, and forgiveness is important because it helps with our transformation. When we have really gone through some difficult, challenging things in the past, us holding on to anger, resentment, this keeps us at a lower vibration. Okay, when we are truly able to forgive and release these energies, we build our energy up. We feel more positive. We feel more happy. As a result, we feel more successful. We feel like Everything that is happening in our life is beautiful. It's amazing. It's for our highest good. Even when we have those challenges that take place with that nine of wands, we know that it is only temporary, that it is merely a part of spirit's plan for us with our process of transformation. So let's see. What is your key to success? Pile number one. What is your key to success? We have summer energy here, and it says bask in joy and light, okay, which is really that energy, like I was saying earlier, about happiness, about joy, about feeling that energy right now versus putting things on hold. Also with the B energy here, for some of you, it could be a sense of community, working with others, networking with other people. Maybe there's people that you have in your life that truly inspire you. Okay, to me, this B is also a lot of hard work, a lot of determination, a lot of focus um, in your life. So pile number one, what is your key to success? What is pile number one's key to success? Wow, we have the warrior and it says be fearless and stand strong. Okay, so even our, if those, like I said, even if there's, there are challenges that are there. It is you not giving up. Even if let's just say that you've opened a business, you started it, and then with the whole, say, COVID thing, you lost your business, you lost your relationship. Does that mean that you should give up on your dreams and goals? No. Does it mean that you should give up on love because your last relationship failed? No. Okay. So a lot of personal strength, determination, willpower. We also have the direction guardian and it says, choose your path. Okay. So some of you, this is a need for you to take action, to keep yourself moving in a forward direction. And because we have this little compass here with all of these little animals as messengers, um, I feel like this is really trusting your intuition, you know, not being afraid to change, not being afraid to shift Okay, fear is something that creates illusion in our life that we cannot attain something. So instead of choosing a path, instead of choosing a direction, instead of choosing to move on, instead of choosing to let go of attachments, you know, growing complacent with where we're at, we don't change, we don't evolve, we don't grow, and we're kind of looking at our life like, why is my life like this? <laughs> why is my life like this? You know, I'm not completely happy realizing the sooner you realize that you are in control of your happiness and your success, you know, sometimes once it, it's just taking that first step, being brave enough to take that first step, take the lead is what spirit is saying here. Okay. Take control. So choosing a path, um, is even if you find out Okay, I'll just say this, you choose a path. And even if it is not the right one and you learn six months from now, I don't really like this. 
you show more strength in that you actually did something. You actually tried. You actually put forth the effort and weren't afraid to take that risk in life. Why? Because that Hierophant and that Page of Swords. The Hierophant is gaining so much wisdom and knowledge from our experiences. And as a result of that, we become wiser, we become stronger, and we're able to show up for ourselves as fearless, not afraid of anything. Because for many of you with that Nine of Wands, you may have already had a lot of challenges in your life. And you're still standing. Okay, so let's get one more from this deck. Pile number one, what is your key to success? We have the lady here and it says, enjoy growth and reap the rewards. Okay, so to me, this kind of kind of gives me like Empress vibes and kind of gives me Seven of Pentacles vibes as well, which is really that you were not afraid to plant the seeds of whatever success means to you in your life. Whether that is that you started to work towards your goals, your career goals, and you went to school, you took the classes, you applied for the jobs, you fixed your resume or your CV, and you weren't afraid to go out and get it. Okay? Those things pay off. Now she's holding this fruit in her hand. And she's able to, to see all of the labor, all of the work, all of the determination and focus and where it got her. Underneath the deck, we have Air Guardian here with Shift Your Perception, okay? So like I was saying, for some of you, it may just be a little bit of that shift away from um, a particular mindset, a situation, a relationship that may not necessarily um, be serving. We also have the Oracle here, and it says wait for important information. So some of you that have... Um, very close connection to spirit, you know, you trust your, say your ancestors, your spirit guides to really tell you when to move, when to shift. Your body is an excellent, your intuition is an excellent internal compass. Okay. And some of you may start to feel all of this energy that is building up inside of you and you kind of feel something's about to change something exciting is going to happen and really all of that energy is really spirit telling you prepare for this change prepare for your next movement don't be afraid of that okay because our intuition will lead us into the experiences that are needed so that we can lead ourselves towards that successful uh type of energy so i'm going to use one last deck Pile number one, what is your key to success? What is pile number one's key to success? We have strength, okay, which goes along with you having courage. To me, it's about willpower, determination, and not giving up, okay? Putting your warrior face on and going out and getting it. We also have timing, okay? So really believing in the right timing, when it's time to shift, when it's time to move, when it's time to take action, when it's time to step up and lead, okay? Trusting that things happen the way that they are meant to, and that when you feel that shift coming, when you feel that spirit is kind of leading you on a different direction, a different path, or towards something that you're truly wanting, especially if you've asked for spirit's help with leading you towards your most abundant, successful life. Trust those signs, okay? Believe in divine timing and that everything is happening in your life at the time that it is meant to. Sometimes if we're working on something um, and we feel like, okay, well, why hasn't this shown up for me yet? Why hasn't this manifested yet? Sometimes there are things that we learn along that path until we finally get that manifestation and we look back and we're like wow now i get it now i understand why i had to go through all of these tests or all of these challenges 
or all of these other experiences before my manifestation arrived. So believe and trust in divine timing. We also have the energy of nurture here as well, which is about nurturing yourself, your ideas, your manifestations, guarding, protecting them, and celebrating yourself in this moment right now. Okay, like I said, that energy of wealth, it is a mindset. Being wealthy, feeling wealthy, that vibration is higher. It is going to be higher than that of self-sabotage, of any in um, thoughts that are self-limiting, um, which can be things that can create blockages in your success is your own mindset. Okay, so I'm going to leave your reading here for you. Pile number one, I hope this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you guys in the next reading. Hi, Pile 2. So for those of you that resonated with this little heart here, and those of you that missed it in the intro, we did shuffle our tarot cards. So if you want to go back and watch that process, you're more than welcome to. So let's take a look at um, your tarot cards. Pile number two, what is your key to success? We have the world energy. We also have, wow, the Nine of Cups. We have the Sun. We have the Four of Cups. We have the Ace of Wands. Wow, the Ace of Cups, I love it. Wow, two Sun cards. Oh my goodness, I love it. The Full Energy. The Hangman. And then we also have the Page of Pentacles. Okay, so let me just take a second. <clears throat> so obviously the first thing is that we have two Sun cards here, um, which is beautiful. Okay, so what is the key to your success? Okay, so what I'm kind of getting here as the first thing aside from our two sun cards here, which is beautiful. So we've got some strong Leo energy coming through here. Um, let's see. Let's get the signs out of the way. We've got um, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We've also got some Virgo energy here um, and Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Okay. So I feel like with the world energy here, okay, the world energy is about completing life cycles. And we go through many different cycles within our lifetime. That could be with relationships. It can be with jobs. It can be, you know, having a difficult time and then being able to kind of make, finally make it through it. And just mean like looking back and be like, oh my goodness, that was horrible. That was difficult. I can't believe I made it through that. But the world energy is about those cycles that end, whether that is a relationship, um, a friendship, you know, that comes to an end. Um, but the world energy brings about endings in our life. And sometimes we may not necessarily understand why things end. Okay. Why things end. And, and, Sometimes there can be attachments that we've placed on a situation, on a person, on something. And that can be something that keeps us stuck at times. So with the world energy here, this is about us celebrating in a way that we have been able to accomplish something. We've made it through something, even if it has been challenging, even if it has been difficult, or if it has been a cycle where we feel so proud of ourselves. This can be like you going to school and getting your degree or you um, spending, say, 10 years in a specific career field or spending, you know, five years, say, in a relationship and you're like, wow, you know, look at, look at what I've accomplished. Look what I've made it through, okay? Each of these experiences teach us something. Okay, so I'm noticing there is this beautiful wreath um, that is here with these infinity symbols. So it's really telling you that these cycles happen over and over again within our life. So what I was saying is the world energy brings about those endings to allow us to have 
a new beginning to start over and I love that you guys have both the ace of wands here and the ace of cups and I'm also noticing that there is this beautiful little lotus here as well so some of these cycles that you will complete within your life may be very challenging but they are also going to be ones that truly help you to envision new beginnings for yourself and understand that sometimes there are some things that do come to an end in our life but that should not be something that blocks you from being able to start new start over okay especially with the ace of wands and the ace of cups here the ace of wands brings about many different ideas potential and that is why you kind of see this wand here that's kind of coming out of the clouds. This is really spirit giving us this divine inspiration, ideas, and all of these little leaves that are growing on it show potential in whatever this idea is, whatever this passion is um, of something that we think of, something that is brought to us in our dreams, something that we envision, some type of idea that pops into our head. Maybe when we're in the shower, when we're out for a walk, when we're out with friends, however that is. The Ace of Wands shows that there is so much potential with these ideas or with these plans or creative projects, ideas that we have. But I feel like not being afraid to take risks in life. I feel because you do have the world energy here that you truly are meant to be whatever I feel like for those of you that are, uh, say, with your career or maybe some of you that may work, like, say, with um, on social media or, or some type of content creator, the world energy is about recognition and about you being recognized by something that you do within your life. Um, so many of you may gain fame in a certain way to a certain extent and may be well known for some type of talent, some type of skill or something that you that you also have. I'm noticing that you do have the four of cups energy here. Okay. Now the four of cups energy can sometimes be when we have certain blind spots in our life. We're not able to see things clearly. We reflect a lot upon the things that we no longer have, the things that we've lost um, and we can become completely disinterested in our life, disinterested in anything new that comes into our life because whatever this world ending was, we may have attachments to the old ways of thinking, the old ways of doing, the old relationship, the old friendship, and we have difficulty with being able to move on and move forward. So the hangman energy here, I feel like is important for you to be successful and to create success in your life because the hangman gives us an opportunity to be able to see things as cycles close in our life and for us to have a deeper say spiritual understanding of those cycles that come to an end no matter what they are friends uh, family situations partnerships jobs that we feel are no longer a fit the hangman energy is about changing your perception, changing your perspective on your success that you envision for yourself. Okay. With all of this sun energy here, the sun is about fulfillment, happiness, joy. It's a, you know, it's the happiest card in the tarot deck. It is really for us to feel and radiate that energy of joy and happiness so that we can then reflect back on the world and the experiences that we've had in the past and change the way that we feel about ourselves, change the way that we envision success for ourselves, and not be afraid to take certain leaps of faith with this fool energy here. The fool is not being afraid to take risks in life, not being afraid to make some type of shift or change or to try something new or to step outside of our comfort zone. Okay. The full energy sometimes doesn't really have a direction. There's a lot of spontaneity that comes with the full energy. 
So this is us trusting the unknown, trusting the greater mysteries in life and being able to plant the seeds for what we intend as success for ourselves in the future. We also have the Ace of Cups energy here as well. And the Ace of Cups is really this beautiful cup that is overflowing with all of this water in it. Okay. Um, so some of you, that Ace of Cups may represent all of the creativity that you have within yourself and all of these creative ideas, all of this passion, all of this desire, all of these things flowing. And we know that we have this creative energy within us, but sometimes we are too afraid to take that leap, to take that risk. The Four of Cups energy, like I said, going back into that, sometimes there could be things that we go through in life, certain endings, cycles that close, relationships that end, and we're so fixated on the past and what we had that we cannot envision ourself as being successful again in the future, whether that is in love, with partnerships, with friendships, with a new career path, with our spiritual path or journey, with our finances. So the Four of Cups is really asking you to be open and receptive to new things coming into your life. Okay, to feel a sense of joy and happiness in this moment at present and not reflect on this um, energy here of the Four of Cups, which can sometimes be boredom, feeling bored in our life, <clears throat> feeling bored, feeling indifferent, you know, kind of having that energy. Let's just say that if you get out of a long term relationship or you get out of a job or that you're stuck in a job, that you don't really like and all of these other opportunities are coming in with this ace of cups the ace of wands and or the page of pentacles you know someone's offering you a new job someone's trying to get to know you after you've just got out of a relationship and this page of pentacles is someone new coming into your life and you're sitting in that four of cups energy thinking about the past, thinking about what that cycle was that ended and you're not open to this, okay? So really this energy is about allowing yourself the freedom to flow, okay? Allowing yourself to be happy in this moment at present, to find happiness within the self, okay? The Nine of Cups is about wishes, dreams, being fulfilled, and also about finding a sense of fulfillment within the self. The Ace of Cups is also important because this is also about self-love, okay? So self-love is also something very important as a key to your success in the future because once you start to really change the way, change perception, change your ideas, in the way that maybe this four of cups could have been something that is limiting you. It's making you miss out on other opportunities that may create new experiences for you in your life that could very well bring in happiness, joy, a feeling of celebration, new ideas to plant the seeds for something new so that you can really work towards making your dreams come true with this nine of cups energy. So to me, this is all about changing perception, your vibration, focusing on all of these opportunities that are already surrounding you, okay? Because that Four of Cups can definitely be missed opportunities when we fail to see that one cycle is closing in our life so that a new one can begin. And we can bask in that energy, in that joy, and knowing that we can now have the opportunity to do things over, to try something new, to step outside of our comfort zone and trust where spirit is leading us on our path and not be afraid to take those ideas, to take that new passion or that new desire and really take the time that we need to see what direction do I really want to go in at this time? What seed am I planting for my future success? Okay, so I'm also feeling the sun energy here is about you choosing happiness in this very moment. Okay, so let's go into your oracle messages. 
And I feel like with the Nine of Cups energy here, this is really Spirit saying, don't be afraid to follow your dreams, which are leading you to this place of success. But all you need to do is take that first step. Don't be afraid of new beginnings. Don't be afraid of starting over. Okay. So pile number two. What is the key to your success? And I feel like it's all in the way that you look at things, especially with this hanged man energy here. Sometimes our perception and having a blind spot with the four of cups is that we say, okay, well, this relationship ended, this job ended, that's it for me. I'll never be happy again. I'll never be successful. I'm just going to give up, forget it right? So when we change our perception and we understand that when things come to an end, it is only an opportunity for us to start new and start over, the abundant universe will provide, okay? This nine of cups is every, and the sun, two suns here, this is beautiful, you know? This nine of cups energy is you having those dreams, having those wishes, being fulfilled, by you taking that leap of faith, by you not being afraid. Look at how his body language is. Like he's about to fall off a cliff, but he knows that if he jumps, if he, you know, is kind of like going into the unknown and trusting where his intuition is leading him, not a care in the world. I have this new idea. I have this new passion. I have this new opportunity for love. I have this new creative idea. And I'm going to bask in that energy right now at present and just kind of feel a sense of fulfillment within myself. So pile two, what is the key to your success? What is the key to your success? Pile number two. Wow, well, that one just flew right off. Okay, so this one says, the antelope spirit with life is speeding up. Okay, so to me, this is all about momentum. Okay, when one cycle ends in our life, don't get caught up on keeping yourself on hold because the hangman can also be feeling stuck in limbo. When one cycle ends in our life and we're just like, okay, well, what the heck just happened? Why did this, why did I uh, lose my job? Or why is this relationship come to an end? Now I feel like I don't have direction. Where am I going? What am I doing? And we keep ourselves stuck in that hangman energy. Okay. The hangman is, can sometimes we can be stuck for sometimes years, you know, months of keeping ourselves in this place where we are not understanding what's happening, that we are in control of our success, of our future. So this antelope energy is saying kind of like when you're going through those cycles that are coming to an end and you've got this momentum, you've got these opportunities that are kind of coming in, take them, be open to them, be receptive to them. So let's see what else. Pile number two, what is your key to success? I'm also seeing a lot of action in that antelope there. We have coyote spirit and says trust in divine detours. Okay. So sometimes there could be, we're going along our path, we're moving along. And then all of a sudden we have an obstacle. We have a blockage and we feel like spirit is kind of guiding us into that direction. Trust that. Okay, even if it's an experience that you have, let's just say that it's a date that you go on and you're like, okay, I'm on this date with this person and this person is totally not my type, right? They're not your type, um, but this person has a really interesting job, okay? And them explaining that to you on your date inspires some type of passion, a light bulb moment for you. Oh my goodness. That is what I feel my soul has been calling me to do. 
So even though the date sucked and they're not your type, something has changed within you. Your perception about life has changed. You start to envision yourself as being free. Maybe this person is someone who you connect with, maybe a friend, maybe a family member, maybe a coworker, who is someone who uh, lives in a, in a van, a converted van, and they live a super free lifestyle. And their ability to just kind of live life as a free spirit is something that triggers something within you. So trust these detours at times that spirit gives to you because they may not be, they may look like something to you. You were going on a date. Okay, but what that date has really turned into is you gaining some type of inspiration or having the epiphany awakening a uh, aha moment of something else coming into your life, you meeting and kind of exchanging energy in some way, communicating with someone, and it kind of helps you along your path. Every single person we meet in our life is either teaching us, of, of, you know, everyone's teaching us a very important lesson or we are giving a lesson to others. And that is how we are all connected with each other, all in the same kind of energy where we're all learning lessons from one another with that exchange of energy, communication, love, um, sometimes disagreements. We learn so much from these experiences. So even if it is, say, like, you go and you apply for this job, you get it, and three months down the road, you find out this isn't it, but you feel inspired by somebody else that works in a different department than you, and you're like, oh my goodness, this is exactly what I want to do. So trust spirit when there are these little things that come to an end or to kind of shift you into a different direction to open you up to something new and don't be afraid of it. So let's see. Otherwise, you keep yourself in this energy of the hangman where you can be stuck in limbo with not really having figured things out or not realizing that you are in control of your success and your own happiness. So pile number two, what is your key to success? We have panther spirit and it says reclaim your power. Okay. Sometimes we go through some challenging friendships, family situations, relationships, the jobs that are toxic and draining and can take every bit of us away from ourself. We don't even feel like the same person after we've gone through that experience. We can feel fragmented. We can feel scattered. We can feel confused. We can feel lost. We can feel broken. And this is spirit saying, reclaim your power, the self-love with the ace of cups. Fill your own cup. Okay? Fill your own cup. Reclaim your power, your energy. For some of you, that hangman energy may be something that you're needing to do is to take a break. Take some time to step outside of a situation to be able to look at things from a different way so that you can then understand, okay, now I get it, spirit. Here I go. Okay, so reclaiming your power, your independence, your individuality so that you can move towards the success that you're wanting to bring into your life. We have ant spirit here with time to collaborate. So some of you working with others, connecting with others, networking with others, <clears throat> having a mentor, somebody that is a muse, an inspiration to you, or even you sharing ideas with someone who is like-minded, okay, um, could really be something that helps to open you up. Some of you with this coyote spirit here, um, like I said, trusting in divine detours, spirit taking you into a little bit of a different direction and that may be for some of you like working with somebody starting a business with someone and this person really gives you skills that you really need but then after a little while you find out you know what i really want to do this job on my own i want to create my own business i want to open my own thing that detour that you have with someone who teaches you a very important lesson and I'm looking at all these little puzzle pieces that are here together. It's kind of like all of these pieces, all of these detours that we take in life help to put pieces together for us so that we can truly envision what success is for us. 
okay? We create our definition of success. But for you, this can also be learning different things, different places, connecting with different people so you truly see, I want this, I want that, I want this for myself. I want all of these things. Look at all these cups with all of these little fruits in it. We've got a fish in one of them, some grapes, apples, a lotus flower, you know, all of these different things that you may have never even realized that would be something that would make you happy. But your experience and just kind of, you know, um, traveling, moving, going places, trying new things, not being afraid of that is truly what I feel like is bringing the most success and happiness for you is that you feel free. You feel a sense of freedom along your path, along your journey, independence, okay? Stepping into and standing in your power is something that is your key to success, is you not losing yourself in situations, in relationships, in connections, in marriages. And if you feel like that, this may be with that world energy where you realize, I need to let this job go. I need to let this relationship go. Or... I need to change my perception and the way that I'm looking at my situation and choose to look at it from a place of unconditional love or put more passion into something that I am uh, have grown disinterested in it. Is it really that this person that is in your life, say, is boring you? Or is it really because of that happiness that you haven't found within the self, you know? So for some of you, it could be that situation as well, is needing to find that happiness from within so that you truly can feel successful and passionate um, towards life. Okay, so let's see. Pile number two. What is your key to success? We have a little bee here, and it says bask in joy and light. So again, I'm getting some networking vibes, connecting with others with that little be there and also focusing on being happy, okay? Choosing happiness now versus putting it on hold. Pile number two, what is your key to success? Wow, we have the butterfly here and it says beauty, okay? So the beauty like I said, some of you may go through some pretty challenging stuff, but really when you can see beauty in everything, okay, even if it is a little bit of a difficult experience that you go through, choose to change your perception and understand from a spiritual perspective why you're going through what you're going through. When you can understand how or why spirit is guiding you, detouring you into a different direction is when you truly are able to enjoy and understand life is when you can see the beauty in all things, in all experiences, in all connections, in all relationships, in all situations that you go through and really create a lot of personal transformation uh, for yourself. So pile number two, what is your key? To success, we've got embrace the energy of peace with the broken arrow, okay? Which also is about not trying to, I feel like, control, okay? Again, a lot of that energy of just freedom, okay? Even the way that this, this uh, guy is riding this horse is just kind of just wide open, free. He doesn't even have a saddle on. The horse... Him just kind of flowing together with ease. So I feel like, yeah, not trying to control, just trusting more in a positive state of energy. We also have the dog here and it says loyalty, sincerity, and unconditional love. Okay. So to me, this is really about loyalty to say friends, family, people around you loyal to yourself, okay, loyal to who you truly are as a person, and if you're feeling like something is no longer resonating with you, maybe needing to uh, make some type of change or uh, transition. So pile number two, what 
What is the key to your success? And I feel like being loyal to your own dreams, your own visions of what success is to you. And if you feel like someone that you meet or connect with, or even a company that you're working at, does not have the same vision as you, does not have maybe say the same goals in mind, and that may be where you say, okay, you know what? It's time for me to move on from this situation, from this friendship, from this job. So pile number two, what is your key to success? We've got the peacekeeper here. Let go of the need to be right. So again, broken arrow, embrace the, embrace the energy of peace. Okay? So to me, this is about, again, not trying to fight, not trying to... To me, this is like taking the high road. Taking the high road. If there are people around you that are creating crazy or drama or a lot of energy that you feel is not serving your highest good, choose to take the high road. And if that means raising your standards, changing your friend group, changing your taste in romantic partners, this is you choosing to elevate yourself. Okay. Pile number two, what is the key to your success? We have the queen and it says woman, fertility, feminine power, sexuality, and friendships. Okay, so to me, this is a lot of Empress energy, a lot of the divine feminine energy, which is about your self-confidence, your self-worth, knowing your value, okay, as a person, even though this is a queen here and is talking about feminine energy, we all have feminine energy within us, okay? The energy of fertility is also about birth and creation, whether that is an idea um, a passion, something that we're wanting to manifest. This is us truly stepping into our power here, reclaiming our power, building strong and meaningful connections, friends, having a good support group, um, feeling comfortable with our femininity, our sexuality, um, our fe being in tune with our intuition and our feminine energy, okay? Which is a lot of self-love, a lot of self-care, um, let's see what else. Pile number two. We have the fire fairy, creative action and optimism. Okay. So choosing to be optimistic about your success, creating success, manifesting success, um, and also action. Okay, because you did have the Ace of Wands here. And like I said, that Ace of Wands is many ideas that you might have throughout your life. Many things that inspire you. Many things that kind of get those creative juices flowing within you. They are all potential. Okay, those ideas that come in and pop into your mind, they, they, can, they have so much potential for you to take them further. But if you feel afraid to take that leap of faith into starting it, all they ever stay is ideas, okay? And if you're truly looking for success in your life with no matter what it is, it is about that, again, that leap of faith, that freedom, that spontaneity, trusting in the unknown, and just going, okay? Believing in yourself. So what is your key to success? Pile number two. Wow, this one's gonna come out. We have the Lady of the Lake, and it says absolute truth, courage, self-respect, and responsibility. Okay? So to me, she kind of reminds me of the Queen of Swords. Okay? This is honesty. Being honest with yourself about whatever situation you're in. Being honest with yourself about if you feel wherever you're at at this place in your life, if it's making you happy. Do you feel like you want something more? Do you feel like you want to work towards something else that is going to bring about more success for you with relationships, with career, with money, with whatever that is? This is also about you taking accountability and responsibility for your own actions, your own decisions, and where you're at in your life right now because where you're at right now is a result of all of your actions and your own decisions, okay? 
Our external reality is a result of our actions, our choices, our thoughts, and what we experience. So if you're feeling, I want success, I want happiness, I want joy, don't be afraid of starting over, starting new, going after it not being afraid to follow your passions and your desires in life. And for some of you, yes, it may require a shift uh, in perspective. Okay, look at that as I'm just as I'm saying that. We have the air guardian here with shift your perception underneath the deck. Okay, so important message for you is to shift your perspective. We've got the uh, hangman under there and spirit kind of confirming that message. There is a shift in perspective that is required for this. Shifting into the energy of joy, of happiness, of abundance, of seeing the beauty in all of the transformation, all of the cycles that you are going through within your life. Choosing happiness now, choosing to vibrate at that higher energy and knowing that success is something that you can create. But it is about you reclaiming your power, stepping into your power and not being afraid of manifesting the success that you want to see in your life. So I'm going to use this last deck here, pile number two. What is your key to success? What is your key to success? Pile number two. Timing. Okay. So this is also trusting in divine timing, trusting that things come into our life for very important reasons and understanding that if we haven't reached this or that yet, trusting that it'll happen at the right time that it is meant to. Pile number two, what is the key to your success? We have organize, okay? So this is spirit saying, stay focused, stay organized with what your goals are. Okay, whether it's love, career, finances, your spiritual path, keep yourself committed, dedicated, organized, focused, taking action where necessary if success is something that you are wanting in your life. We also have romance here. Okay, so this energy of romance is about fostering meaningful romantic, loving energy. So if love is something that you are looking for in your life at this time, don't be afraid of letting go of past connections, past relationships, and really elevating yourself, your own energy into that Ace of Cups, okay? Which is unconditional love, self-love, reclaiming your energy your power your self-respect is what spirit is saying here with that energy here it's also about self-love knowing your worth knowing your value not trying to force or control situations that are not working relationships that are not working relationships that make you feel like you have to beg and ask to be loved or to be shown respect, or to be shown admiration. If love and a higher vibrational connection is something that you are wanting as being part of your success, as having a successful, healthy relationship, you have to match that energy, meaning that you let go. You change the old ways of thinking, the old ways of doing, the old perception of things into manifesting this new more empowered version of yourself who is extremely confident in your power, believing in yourself, knowing your worth, knowing your value, and respecting yourself, okay? You, um, sometimes self-limiting beliefs can block us from truly connecting with higher vibrational partners, and we keep meeting the same person over and over and over again. Why? Because we haven't learned the lesson. So take some time to think about what you've learned from that experience. For those of you, even if you're in a relationship right now and you're kind of like, okay, this is stagnant. It's not really going anywhere. What are me and my partner doing that is kind of leaving us in this place where we're stuck? Okay. So you truly elevating your own energy, your own vibration is going to help you to connect with and foster 
more meaningful, more healthy partnerships in your life. Because if you're already in this energy where you feel completely happy, you feel fulfilled, you feel joy, you feel spontaneity, you feel a sense of freedom and independence, guess what? You're also going to meet and connect with partners just like that. Okay? Which is beautiful. So pile number two, what is your key to success? We've got our last two cards here. I love it. So willpower which is strength, determination, focus to move towards success is having this determination within us that I am not going to accept less in my life than what I know I am worthy of. Okay? That means not settling. Not settling at that job. Not settling in that relationship. Not settling for less than you know you are worthy of. We also have choices. Okay, so spirit is also wanting you to be aware of your choices that you make in life and really take some time to think about them and what would be the best ones for you. Because like I said, your choices create your reality that you experience. So if you feel, oh, I'm not happy with this, I'm not happy in this relationship, I'm not happy with this job, I feel confused, I feel sad, I feel worried, I feel stressed, I feel broken. I feel all of these different things. Think about your choices. What chase choices are you making right now that are either blocking you from success or helping you to reach and attain that goal, that energy of success? Okay. So I'm going to leave your reading here for you. Pile number two. I hope this was helpful for you guys and I will see you in the next reading. Hi, pile three. So for those of you that resonated with this little a fossil stone thing. I forgot what it's called. Petrified wood. Petrified wood. So um, those of you that missed it in the intro, we did pull our tarot um, for your pile. And then if you want to go back and watch that, you're more than welcome to kind of look at that process. Um, and then we're going to be looking at your tarot first with what is your key to success in your life, whether that is for love, career, um, money, your spiritual path, um, and then we're going to be pulling your oracle cards um, for you. So let's take a look. So we have the Knight of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. We also have Judgment, so Virgo energy here. We also have the Ten of Cups, the Hermit, the Eight of Cups. Wow, we have the Magician. The Knight of Cups, the Ten of Swords, Strength, and then we have the Five of Cups. Okay. Okay, so let me just take a second just to kind of get this vibe going on here. We've also got Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, and Leo energy here. So what is your key to success? Okay, so the first thing that I am noticing here as your key to success, the standout thing to me here is this judgment energy. Okay, now judgment is really this energy... Um, I like to kind of describe it as the phoenix rising from the ashes um, because the judgment energy is getting close to the end or almost at the end of a big cycle that we've gone through within our life. And judgment is really an opportunity for us to transform, to grow, to learn lessons from whatever we've just gone through. And I feel like because we do have the Ten of Swords here, and the Five of Cups, that I'm feeling that many of you may have gone through a lot of painful endings in your uh, life. Now, that could be from bad breakups. It can be from being met with a lot of disappointment and feeling mentally exhausted, fatigued, drained within your life. And sometimes after going through those experiences in your life, 
it can really make you question who you are as a person, especially when they are very challenging and they can kind of leave you in a place where you feel depressed, where you feel sad, where you hold anger, where you hold resentment, where you hold frustration and all of these different emotions. And you may feel lost. You may feel like you don't really have direction. Okay. And in some cases, it may kind of force you to move on from situations, friendships, relationships, jobs, because what you're currently going through or experiencing may not necessarily be what you envision as success. Okay. Feeling that if you failed in relationships, you failed at a career, a job, or failed at saving money or meeting a financial goal or not being able to buy a house or anything that you're really wanting in your life. Judgment is an opportunity for us to look back at everything that we have done at this point in our life. And we learn very valuable and important lessons. And we can either really look at everything at face value and say, okay, this was a very challenging situation. It was a challenging job. It was a challenging friendship. It was a relationship that really was very um, chaotic or troubling or, you know, what, whatever the situation is, judgment is an opportunity for us to either take those lessons um, and be able to move forward, be able to create something new, to, to kind of discover who we are apart from those experiences and really transform grow, evolve, if that is truly what we choose to do. Otherwise, when we don't do that, we can hold on to all of this, all of the pain, all of the heartache, all of the disappointment that we've experienced. And we may not necessarily choose to change. And some people don't. Okay, and some people keep themselves stuck in a karmic cycle over and over and over again. And those lessons go get increasingly harder and more painful because it's kind of like we're compounding all of these experiences that we've had. And instead of really taking some time out with the eight of cups and the hermit energy here to really do some reflection within the self about what it is that we truly want what happiness is for ourselves, what success means to us, whether that is having a healthy romantic relationship, whether that is being, is us being open to new experiences, opportunities, and feeling courageous enough to be able to go after them and realizing that we are in control of our success. We are in control of our happiness based off of our actions. So at times we can choose to keep ourselves in this energy with the five of cups and the 10 of swords. Um, and sometimes that five of cups can be very difficult for us to be able to let go of because it's something that we're holding on to. So judgment is really that opportunity for us to kind of not really erase and forget, but us for, for us to be able to forgive, for us to be able to release and heal and transform with this energy of judgment. Okay, so your key to success in your life is to understanding that, yes, there will be those challenging situations that cause a lot of pain or heartache or disappointment. But that doesn't mean that we cannot be reborn in a sense with this judgment energy and have our own rebirth. Start new, start fresh, wipe the slate clean, and really go after and create and manifest the success that we're wanting in our life. Now, for some of you, it could be taking a pause, taking a break from a specific career, a job, a way of thinking, a relationship that is not serving. And the Eight of Cups energy is about us being strong enough to be able to let go of vices, addictions, attachments ways of thinking, self-limiting beliefs, connections that do not serve, friendships that do not serve, um, ways and patterns of behavior that have kept us stuck, that have kept us feeling defeated and broken and not being able to think clearly because of everything that we're holding on to. So this Eight of Cups energy shows a lot of strength within us to be able to go after um, 
finding out who we are as a person. And that happens through this hermit energy. Okay. The hermit energy is really a time in our life where we are looking for guidance. We are feeling lost. We may be feeling confused. We may be feeling sad. We may be feeling depressed. We may be feeling like we're going through a dark night of the soul and we don't know what direction we're going. And we may not know what is next for us. Okay. So I feel like in this reflective energy here with the Eight of Cups and the Hermit energy that part of your success comes with being able to take a pause and a break from situations that you may have gone through in your past or maybe even something that you're going through currently for you to be able to take some time for yourself, kind of like regroup and take some time to think about who you are, who you want to become, being your most authentic self getting in alignment with your purpose, with your passions, with your dreams, with your desires. And the only way that you really find that is looking within yourself. Okay, looking within yourself. The strength energy is about having courage, about being able to strengthen our connection that we have with spirit, with God, with universe, and feeling that sense of oneness with everyone in our life with our friends, with our family members, with our animals that are around us, if we have a strong connection to animals, to nature, and feeling a sense of oneness, of happiness. And the hermit energy is a time for us to quietly reflect upon what our desires are, who we want to become. Um, healing, okay, is another thing. The Ten of Swords is a huge message for healing being able to let go, being able to release, being able to let go of any of the things that we're truly holding on to because some of these things can create blockages for us along our path to success. So the Knight of Swords energy, <coughs> actually, I want to start with the Magician. The Magician energy is all of those ideas, plans that you have. And these may be something that you receive from spirit, from visions, from dreams, from signs, from symbols, from synchronicities, anything that you are really getting as you are spending this time in reflection. The magician energy is as above, so below. Meaning that if you look at this little wand in his hand, all of these energies, ideas from spirit is something that he is choosing to manifest in the physical reality. And he has done that. This um, infinity symbol here is that connection to spirit. Um, normally in the strength card, there's also an infinity symbol there too. But this is this deck doesn't have it. Um, and you notice that he's got all of these flowers here. Okay? Which is saying that he has taken what is as above, which is the thoughts, the, the, the actions that he's wanting to take, the things that he's envisioning for himself, and he's manifested that into the 3D into the 4D reality with his tools that he has within himself, okay? The cups energy is all about your emotions, your intuition, creativity. The wands energy is our passions, our desires, and that creative inspiration that re we receive from spirit. The swords energy is our thoughts, our words, our actions, and what we do in order to make this happen. The pentacles is that all of those energies that have manifested into the 3D for us to reap as rewards, for us to build upon and plant the seeds for something new, for us to truly feel successful, okay? So the magician energy is really spirit telling you, you, the, you realizing that you have all the tools you need right now, that you are perfect just as you are. And realizing that you have this power, you have this potential within yourself, but it is about you taking action here with this Knight of Swords, because the Knight of Swords is about quick decisions, choices, action, being very decisive about moving towards what we want. And I love that you guys have the Ten of Cups here, okay? Which is really telling me that success, happiness, fulfillment, Abundance is within your grasp. Okay? 
So taking time in your life to really reflect on where you're at. Am I happy? Do I feel successful? Being courageous enough to let go of things from the past. Because like I said, these things can create blockages for us along our path. These energies here, if you notice, they're all blue, kind of looking a little dark here. Okay? But there's also this energy of this yellow, which is, um, to me, kind of changing, transitioning as you are focusing on healing. Um, and that can even be healing your thoughts, your words, the way that you communicate to yourself. If you feel like, that's it, I'm a failure, I'm done, I can't do this anymore, and you give up on yourself, that is where spirit is really wanting you to take time to really reflect within the self and take time to heal, take time to think. Take time to clear your mind and to really find answers from within the self. The Knight of Cups is also here. And the Knight of Cups can be a representation of new love coming into our life, new opportunities. So for some of you, if you feel completely broken and sad because of something that has happened in your past and it has been really difficult for you to be able to let go or move on, the judgment energy is really about you looking back at that experience and being able to take your time, take time to heal, take time to forgive. And sometimes that does take time in itself to be able to forgive someone for something they've said, something they've done, whether a romantic partner, a friend, a coworker, depending on what kind of a life you have, you know, depending on where you're, where you, where you're at in your life. So the Knight of Cups is about you being brave enough that even after you may have felt broken and, and torn down and stripped away of, you know, many things that you can rise again, you know? So I feel like the huge message for you here with your key to success is not allowing the past because that's really what judgment is, is a reflection of all of the things, a culmination of all of these things that we've gone through and being able to kind of reflect back on those things and kind of wipe the slate clean, start over, start fresh and open ourselves up to new opportunity, not being afraid to lead with our heart and with our feelings, with our emotion, with our intuition and with our creative ideas and being courageous enough to let go of things that do not serve so that we can really take action where necessary to move towards the success that we're wanting in our life, whether that is a new relationship and partnership or whether this is us truly manifesting an abundant lifestyle for ourselves. Okay, that happiness, that 10 of cups is complete fulfillment, happiness. There's a beautiful rainbow that is kind of coming out of this cup that just kind of showing that even after this period of challenge, of sadness, of pain, of sorrow, of grief, of loss, of anger, resentment, frustration, all of these things, you can rise again. Okay, you can rise again. So let's go into your oracle messages. Pile number three. We've also got Leo energy here. Virgo. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So pile number three, what is your key to success? What is pile number three's key to success? Be loyal to what you love. Okay, the things that resonate with you. We have... The canary spirit, and it says, sing your own song, meaning that you don't have to fit yourself into a little box to be like everyone else. Okay, this is you really doing things in your own way and things that bring you happiness, you joy, so that you feel successful. Okay, we also have the cow spirit, and it says the miracles are endless. Okay, so to me, this is also a shift in perspective. You know, because for some of you, if you have gone through some really challenging things in your life, it may make it very difficult for you to know nothing other than chaos, pain, heartache, disappointment. And that can really make it hard for you 
to see that success is something that is within your grasp. But once you start to shift your energy and start to realize the universe is abundant, I can manifest whatever this is that I want in my life because I am in control as that magician. And knowing that the universe is abundant, the universe is full of opportunity, but it is about our awareness, our perception of that. So pile number three, what is your key to success? We have the butterfly spirit and it says transformation is beautiful. Okay, and that is what I was saying with this judgment energy is where all of that transformation happens by us being able to look at the past, forgive, heal, release, so that we can have renewal. Underneath the deck, learn from the past with the elephant spirit. The elephant is also a very, very wise, wise, wise creature. Um, so this is remembering you know, like I said, you don't have to forget, especially when some of those things have been particularly painful and difficult that you may have gone through. But this is about you being able to release those burdens from yourself so that you are not, say, missing red flags in friendships, missing red flags in relationships, or having your intuition tell you something. And then the last minute, you go the opposite direction and it ends up being a situation that you encounter that doesn't lead to the best outcome for yourself. So you really learn, hey, I need to truly trust my intuition where it's guiding me. Your intuition will always lead you on the right path to the experiences that are necessary for your soul's growth. So pile number three, what is your key? To success we have the Sun and it says enjoy success and happiness okay so especially for those of you that are feeling or have gone through some heavy stuff here that we're seeing with the ten of swords five of cups and have experienced a lot of pain in your life this Sun energy happiness success is a state of being it is a mindset and when we can shift into understanding that, yes, we have gone through some challenging things, but that doesn't have to change who we are and what we feel inside. We can choose to be happy. We can choose to feel joy and allow ourselves, allow ourselves to be happy again. Okay. So pile number three, what is your key to success? fear okay so to me this is really spirit saying letting go of fear okay fear may be a major blockage for you and it could even be fearing success or fear of failure okay that creates blockages from your success look at that trust Trust yourself, trust your intuition, trust your path, trust the uncertainty, the unknown. We've got the drum and it says dream and journey, okay? Which means that if you have a specific dream that you want to fulfill in your life that is going to make you feel successful, abundant, happy, don't be afraid of chasing, following, pursuing, taking action, going after those Okay, underneath the deck, we've got death, okay, which is all about transformation, about endings, new beginnings, starting something new, not being afraid and not feeling, okay, well, this situation didn't work out. Like I said, that phoenix rising from the ashes, get up, start over. It's okay. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay to feel sad. Um, when I was going through a lot, a really super, super dark time in my life, um, and I have a video posted of this on my second YouTube channel, 
the mystical gypsy there is a, a video that I have posted there for those of you that are really feeling pretty pretty low and pretty down you might want to check out that video if you haven't seen it before it is me talking about my experience with depression and going through that whole process and I had one of my really really good friends um, that I went to nursing school with and she was the only real person a friend that I had as a female that stuck by me through all of the ugly downward spiral that my life went into and she looked at me and I was just completely broken and she looked at me and she told me Monique she's like it's okay for you to you know fall it's okay for you to be knocked down and to be where you're at right now it is not okay to stay there and she was like super tough love like you pick yourself up you get back up and you you know like kind of like what she's what this these messages that are coming out for you you start over you start new you know it's okay to get to be knocked down it's not okay for you to keep yourself there you know this is really encouraging you i feel like with spirit telling you you know don't give up on your success don't give up on your dreams don't give up on your goals don't give up on love don't give up on any of the things having things that make you feel in your life complete fulfilled happy just because there's one ending in your life or something that is is kind of putting you to that point in your life does not mean that you will not rise again okay and those words that she told me have stuck with me my entire life since then and every time I start to feel you know a little shaky I think about what she's told me you know and that is really truly something that stuck with me to continue to give me inspiration on my path and learn to trust my feelings my emotions honor them as they come up process them heal them and release them and get go and keep moving you know so pile number three, what is the key to your success? What is the key to your success? Pile number three, we have guardian angel and it says you are not alone. Okay, so spirit wanting you to know that your spirit guides, your guardian angels, your angels, your ancestors, God, universe, spirit, whatever you connect with, you are never alone. Okay, they are always there to talk to, to help you. And if you need their assistance, you need angelic support, ask them. Okay? Because of our own free will, they cannot just kind of step in to our life. You can totally ask them, please help me, guide me, lead me on my path to success, on my path to joy, happiness in my life. And they will help you. They will put out the signs, the synchronicities for you to pay attention to, for you to be able to trust and move forward. Pile number three, what is your key to success? We've also got the fire fairy with creative action and optimism, which is all about you choosing to be optimistic versus pessimistic and to take action when you are feeling that fire, that need. Okay, we have the goblin here, and it says the wounded human ego. Okay, the wounded human ego. So, if your ego is keeping you in a place of fear, of doubt, of shame, of guilt, of sadness, of all of these different things, this is really time for you to, like I said, the Eight of Cups, the Hermit Energy, the Judgment Card, is all about this transformation of the self. Take time out for yourself to transform, to become that beautiful butterfly. Okay? So what is the key to your success? Pile three. We also have the wind fairy, and it says your thoughts, your words, and intellectual analysis. So be mindful of your thoughts your actions, your words. Okay, underneath the deck, we have the sage, be devoted and committed. Okay, to your success, to your journey, to your path, 
to what story you are telling, to who you want to become, to what success means to you. And make sure you get your thoughts, your words, your actions align with that. Okay? So I'm going to use this last deck, pile number three. Pile number three, what is your key to success? Willpower. Okay? And willpower is all of our strength. It is balancing out our, our energy, feminine, masculine. And continuing to move forward with determination, with success on the mind. Having the will to continue to move forward on our path, even though there may be some things that may, you know, bring challenges is that we face them head on. We don't allow those things to be roadblocks that completely stop our energy from moving forward. Okay. We are strong enough to keep going. We are strong enough to pick ourselves up and start over. Happiness. Okay. So happiness. Happiness is your key to success. Meaning you are choosing to be happy right now. In this very moment. Not happy when I do this. Not happy when I have that. Not happy when I have this. You choosing to be happy right now. Happiness is not a destination. It is a state of being, a state of the mind. Okay? Choosing to change perception away from the old self, the old story. We have abundance. Okay? So happiness, abundance, willpower. Let's get one more. We have, what is this? Healing. Okay, so focusing on healing here and also abundance, same thing. We can choose to be in this vibration, in this energy right now to draw in abundance, to feel happy, to choose to be happy in this moment. When we already feel abundant, we already feel we have everything we need right now. That is when we are able to change and elevate our vibration to match that of, say, wealth, prosperity. By choosing to heal ourselves, choosing to work on ourself, choosing to look within the self to reflect on our feelings, our thoughts, our emotions, our experiences, and truly growing from them, evolving from them. Abundance is also a mindset. You can say to yourself, well, because I don't have this amount of money in my, in my bank that I feel poor, I feel helpless, I feel, uh, you know, sometimes victim type of mentality. And that vibration, that energy is not that of abundance. Abundance is a higher vibrational energy. So when we can feel abundant, happy, blessed, gratitude, for what we have in our life right now, even if it's not a lot. We elevate ourself and we can then match that energy of abundance to bring in wealth, prosperity, success into our life. And healing is also something that is very helpful with removing those blockages that are keeping us stuck in those lower vibrations. Okay, so be devoted and committed to yourself, your healing, your path, happiness, abundance, your willpower, your strength, your determination to be successful by transforming from the experiences that you've gone through. That is your key to success. So I'm going to leave your reading here for you, pile number three. I hope this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you guys in the next reading.